you need to go down and file a uh, an affidavit that states or stipulates uh, truth in a cause. That cause will go along with whatever arrest record or incident report that the police make. When you have substantial evidence to the contrary, especially video or pictures where there's no reason for the action taken, then that policeman, just like everybody else, can be held responsible for what they do. In the case of killing someone, that's at minimum manslaughter. This also applies to uh, the toasters they used to give away at banks. When you open an account, it blew up and killed mom. That is a literal physical crime of, at minimum, manslaughter. And the uh, this problem uh, has been going on since the 50s. It's not been addressed. This is why I suggested that whenever a sheriff... Uh, cannot perform his duties because the attorney general says he can't arrest somebody or wants to remove him from office or whatever the excuse might be, arrest those individuals so that this stops. This then gives the police two things. It gives them real legal standing, for one, and the second part of it is that is going to garner a lot of respect from a lot of people. In short, there have been incidences not very many, this is beginning, where other policemen have been taking cops, I'm talking about their buddies, into custody for extraordinary violations. That can be tasering, that can be a lot of things, but uh, there's beatings, there's uh, one incident where uh, all they did was fire the cop, and he killed somebody. I mean, shot him. Uh, These things have got got to quit. The uh, basis to remedy the situation is twofold. One is that the police need to understand that uh, the job they've been tasked to do may not be as such legal according to their actions. The second part of this is that if their actions are appropriate and they are correct, they'll find that citizens will actually help hold the guy down while they put the cuffs on him. This is not uncommon. And the working between the police and the citizenry is just as critical, as I said, in localization. So what you've got to do is follow the bad cops around. There are ways to find out what what their duties are. There are ways to find out where they are assigned. And simply make sure that they, uh, when they uh, go to beating somebody up just because they're there or they feel like they want to play King Kong or the badge and the gun goes to their head or whatever their excuse might be, you got a video, you got witnesses, and you can prove it. You get a few of those, at the very least, the badge and the gun goes. That's the very least. Generally, the police side with the police. So this is why I do not... Um, suggest allowing a police inquiry, but that you actually prefer uh, charges against the individual. That will solve the problem, and that's the answer to that one. What about the guys that, or women, um, that have molestation charges? Some of the molestation charges are bogus, and then again, we have people that are molesters living one block away from a school. How can that be remedied? Um, well, um, bogus charges are difficult. Um, I would uh, I would suggest that uh, there needs to be a combination of better proofs in terms of a, a case where someone says they were molested or sexually assaulted in some form or another. That's going to be difficult. Now, the basis goes to this. If you have any physical evidence, save it. Any kind of a jar will do for liquids, period. Number two, uh, living too close to uh, schools, as I understand it, is forbidden under the uh, sexual predator laws. Um, If they've got no place to live in that area, then they need to move. Just that simple. Now, I don't see any special accommodations for someone who is truly a sexual predator. 
uh, no special accommodation. Uh, in other words, I don't care if you've got a, if it's the only job you can find right now. You're going to go uh, to a place where it is available for you to be, so that you're not within striking distance of a school, etc. The um, problems all arise going to proofs of uh, what actually happened. Now, in some cases where, and I'll give you an example, two underage people get together uh, consentingly, and uh, at the time that that person turns a certain age, they can be uh, charged with or listed on criminal registries. Uh, these are not the type of crimes that can be uh, used in that manner. And there's one uh, case right now where this exact thing happened, and the uh, person has been maligned because they were put on this registry. And they're suing for a combination of damages, not only to be removed, because they already requested that. They removed it. He got another copy, and there he is again. So there's a lot of things that need to be taken care of. And all of these little problems, they have to be worked out in two different ways. One, according to the area, because you have different lifestyles. The city's not going to be the same as the country, et cetera. So you have to work these things out within, within that perspective. But also, you need to make sure, I mean, if you hear somebody uh, is dirty doing uh, whatever, they're getting paid to look the other way, they're dealing drugs or whatever, and they are in law enforcement, uh, get some evidence. You might have to go out and lay in the bushes in the rain or something in order to get a video of them exchanging envelopes with the wrong people or whatever. But these things, over a period of time, stack up. You get three or four charges against that individual and you let the uh, people who are in charge of making sure the police are uh, doing their job correctly know about this and provide copies of the evidence to them, they will investigate. I have had uh, several officers removed when I was uh, residing in the state of Florida uh, in varying ways. Some of them left town, some of them retired. There's a variety of things that uh, transpired. So it can be done, um, and there's a variety of ways to, to go about that. So that's basically your answer to those. I want to give you a moment to bring us up to date if there is any new updates about what's been going on as far as the arrest or um, preparations there, too. Well, I'm going to say everything's a two-way street. As far as being definitive about the arrest, I'm not going to do that. Um, there are uh, the beginnings of the things that I've discussed on, on the uh, different radio shows that have already transpired. Now, people are aware to some extent, if you're not, get online and look it up. Uh, Europe uh, is going crazy. The reason they're going crazy is two reasons. They do not have the funds to back the currency known as the euro. They also have an extraordinary, staggering, impossible to pay back debt. Uh, this is where you have what's called a consumerism form of banking. This means that you have to go and acquire new funds to replace the old and to pay off those who had investments that are coming due to be paid. It's a Ponzi scheme, literally. This is the basic structure of one. Then uh, to go along with that, you've got some extraordinary maneuvers here. Um, we've got a Northcom maneuver uh, scheduled between the between May 2nd and 9th in six different states. So seeing uh, military convoys wouldn't seem out of place because it's a training exercise. However, it could be the good guys putting their troops in place. You don't know, and you won't until it's time. And this is the other problem with this. Now, as far as furthering things, um, the uh, legalistics involved uh, should be complete uh, as of this past week. If not, first or next week. There's a couple of situations that um, need to be in place before the military can take its action. Now, the other part of this is the people. 
the military, although they have the civilian authority given to them by uh, the uh, last completed project where the states became individual nations. Uh, that's only a part of the part of the picture. The other part of the picture is the voice. And I'll give an example of that. Do you like being ripped off? Uh, you know, cold piney fingers going down your pants to get your money. If not, then I will suggest that you get involved with this simply because that is what the banking and federal government system has been doing to everybody. Just that simple. So if you don't like those things, then um, I suggest that you uh, start hooking up in groups and get prepared to be able to uh, offer statewide, not just a county or small group or small town, but statewide uh, opinion of, hey, you guys have been ripping us off. That is not cool. We want our money back. This sort of thing, when you have enough people saying so, uh, it will bring the system to a halt. This is what needs to happen. The predication or uh, requirements before an action are very simple. You have to have everything in place. And I don't know of anybody that wants to pay federal taxes. That goes to a corporation. It does not go to our treasury. It does not go to this country. It goes to the central banking system which is privately owned. That means it's, you're putting money, taking food off the table, things of that nature, to enrich somebody that's already so wealthy they can't really stand it anyway. This is the problem. This is one of the problems. The other one deals with all these rules, regulations, and gobbledygook that they decided to uh, foster on us. Unfunded mandates. The federal government says, thou shalt. Then to go along with it, you've got these uh, illegal... Uh, executive orders. I have uh, done some checking and uh, it goes back quite a ways. There are very few, if any, executive orders that can be used on a legal basis simply because they have not been done correctly. People start need to start learning how these things work so they can take this down to the local level and tell their mayor that uh, no, uh, Mother Nature doesn't uh, clean up the leaves in, in, you know, in the forest, so there's no reason for me to clean the leaves up in my yard as such. And you're not sending uh, local workers over to do that for me and then charge me for the privilege. It doesn't work that way. These go to property rights and things of that nature. And these things need to be brought to a head. They need to be done, this needs to be done immediately. Uh, yesterday would not have been soon enough to my standards. So here you go again, localization. And the idea of the founding fathers was to give the people the control, not a banker, not a politician, not some lobbyist, not somebody with money. And we need to, we need to fix that. So uh, this is what we are intending to and uh, taking actions towards doing. And that's the answer to that question. Let's go to the financial for a moment. Um, Russia shut down their stock exchange for about six hours or so. In that, I can't believe that they just had a malfunction. Is there any chance that they were switching to uh, a new global system? Hello. Is there any reason that Russia might have been changing to the new global financial system? Uh, you cut out in the middle of that question. Um, Russia's stock exchange went down for five hours. Is yeah, there any way that they were switching to a new global system? Well, they are realigning some of what they're doing, but... Uh, the problem is a person by the name of George Soros. Uh, he couldn't affect a direct takedown while he was in the country. Apparently, uh, there was an arrest warrant issued for him for financial terrorism. Um, the second part of that goes to the fact that you can do these things from a distance if you have people who will act as your agent. Soros has been known for that for a long time. I'll give you an example. He owns both political parties. Now, if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what does. 
uh, quite simply, they shut it down 